from the month of February. And I'm hoping that by the grace of God, we will summarize it by the month of uh, May. By the grace of God, I'm hoping by May, we should be through with the teaching on temptation. Then we go into something else. And in the first service, we've been studying uh, demonic strategy to rob you of your what? Of your God-given destiny. Now today, here and there, we, we, we took the same uh, topic. We studied spiritual parenting. That while you as a child of God, as you have biological parents, you should have spiritual parents. Please listen to the message uh, on Facebook. The Lord bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, those, do I have my illustration stuff again? If you have it, please bring it to the front for me. Now, let me come back to how I showed you what, I don't want you to forget this illustration at any time. What temptation is. Now, the first time I showed you, I showed you clearly using this same uh, 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 means to show you. Please come with it. Come with it. Give it to the usher, to one of the big usher, the male usher. Praise the Lord. Because I discovered something about, you know, church and about events like this, event places like this. When the usher is female, people don't only look at the illustration. They'll be looking at, some men will be looking at the sister. Some women, you know, women like to envy themselves. Look at how her hair is long. Are you sure she's born again? Are you sure it's a real hair? Who knows where her hair will even reach in that way? So I don't want you to be distracted. I praise the Lord. You know, women, you don't have problem. God should just help you. You know you don't have problem. Praise the Lord. Men don't fight men. If you see men watching football, they are united. But I'm yet, I'm yet to see what unites women. Even gossip, they fight. God will help us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are you are a unique species. Bolon she dying. Oh yeah, to go. Oh yeah, to go. Ah, women. Let's concentrate. Now look at this. I told us. I said. Now you look at this. What do we call this? Is just ordinary donut. You know. Uh, I, me, I call it magnified pop pop. You know, it's pop pop, but they magnify it. They make it bigger. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at it like this, you know, it does not attract. It is, it is less attractive to, to you. If you look at it, you like it, yes. But when they want to sell and they want to catch your attention, that's when they will add all the sugar. Just like I told you the first day I did it, they will add all the sugar. Why are they adding this sugar? They want to catch your attention they want to call your you they want to take your focus they want you to look towards that direction and wish to have a bite that ah come on i love this now look at it the way i diced it with the sugar look can you see the way i not die sorry the way i sourced it with the sugar uh look at it very well you look at if you put this now in a magnifying glass you know at the showroom uh at the snacks shop you put it in the glass you look at this sugar the thing will be glittering. You want to have a bite. It's pop off. Oh. You know, I call it magnified pop off, need donut. Because it's the same flower, the same size, but different. This almost the same shape. Gone. You know, but by the time the, that you now see it, you feel like I just need to have a bite. Now, this is what temptation is. I've told you several temptation is when the devil makes sin to be so attractive in order to catch your attention. That's what temptation is. To, uh, it makes sin so attractive in order to catch your attention. Why do people want to steal other people's things? You know, they look at it as, ah, if I steal this car, it's like if you don't, if you don't eat this thing at this time, it's like you are missing. Now, the devil will make sin so attractive that you will feel that if I don't have a taste, if I don't have a bite, I will lose out. So he wants to call your attention. Now, that's what temptation is. And I've taught you when we started in February that God is not your tempter. All done your woe. God is not the tempter. The devil is the tempter. He only seeks the permission of God to tempt you. So, if you see a lady and you are not yet married, and something is just telling you, ah, you need sex, you need to have, even if you are engaged, a Christian is not supposed to have sex until after marriage. See, I hear. Marriage, biblically, as a Christian should be, I mean, sorry, sex should be after marriage, after you have done the needful. Now, what is the needful in Christian marriage? It begins with what? You paying of dowry. You don't go to church first. You pay dowry. When you pay dowry, you receive the parent's consent. Then, that person in the normal life has become your wife. You have paid dowry. 
Then why do we go to court? We go to court because we went to seal our marriage legally. So that in case, in the future, if anything arises, and somebody is saying, I'm coming to take over my, proper, my brother's property. I'm coming to take over my brother's property. I'm coming to take over my brother's property. Listen, because I know something is trending on Facebook now. An irresponsible man are praising that footballer. Ah, my mother. I will will all my property to my mother. Listen, in the Garden of Eden, God said, the man is alone, and I will make for him and help me suitable. God didn't give him a mother. He gave him a wife. So all the men that are here, if you love your mommy more than your wife, you are in error. Because no matter how much you love your mommy, she will soon die. My own mommy is dead. She has gone. I'm living my life now with my wife. You should learn to understand that when you get to certain points of your life, you begin to set priorities. Am I communicating? It's not for today. Am I about that, that? You hear it very well during the family Sunday. I just branch here. Now, you know what I'm talking about sex? Now, so many Christians today, once they get engaged, ah, this lady is beautiful. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose her. They have to go into sex. You have sinned against God. Why? Because the devil has made that pop off, magnified pop off that you call donut, has made it so attractive, so attractive that you feel if I don't eat it, ah, I'm losing something. It's magnified pop off. That's why you see that after you have gotten married, how many times have you had sex after you have gotten married? Was it as tempting as it used to be before you got married? No. The devil wants you to sin against God. Now, and the same thing is with money. The same thing is with positions. Anything that has sin in it is not God. That's why if there is a drive from within you to do something, the first thing you must find out, is it, is it, is it not a sin? Is it the will of God? If it is not the will of God, you better bury and conquer that hunger. Say I hear. So what is temptation? Temptation is whenever the devil magnifies sin, beautifies sin in such a way that you just feel like committing it. Hallelujah. Now, what did we come to do today? When you decide to rise over temptation, is there anything you will gain? Now, we have been talking about temptation. We've been talking about the punishment of temptation. We've been talking about the things that will happen to who do, those that fall into temptation. But if you decide not to fall into temptation, do you have anything to gain? Now, that's what we want to study today. And I will show you three people from the Bible that rose against temptation that refused to fall. The devil tempted them. They said, no, I won't fall. Me, only Shubu said. They stood and they also gained. Now, let's start with the book of James chapter 1 and verse 12. Everything I teach you, I will confirm from scriptures. James chapter 1 and verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Please have it on screen. And once it's on screen, it's a Bible study, uh, first Bible reading. We all will stand up to read together. Let's be on our feet as we are going to read together. James chapter 1 and verse 12. In honor of God's word. After the count of three, let's read together. One, two, and three. Let's go. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has appointed to them, sorry, promised to those who love him. Let's read again. One, two, and let's go. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For, he has, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, can I tell you a simple truth? What is the strength that helps us to conquer temptation? Love of God. He said those that love God are those that conquer temptation because it's not easy. It's not easy to see what you like. But because there is sin at the entrance, you say no because you love me. It's, if you don't love God, you can't overcome temptation. Do you hear me? If you don't love God, you can't overcome. Because at that point, look at, look at, now be sugar and shame. Just look at it. As I'm looking at it myself here, it's like I should eat this donut. But I know my age. I know that as, at this age, sugar is not good for me. But something is telling me, eat this thing, eat this thing, eat this thing. But because I love God, he has invested so much in me. And if I kill myself now with what I eat, I will make his labor be wasted. He will now begin to look for somebody else to use. I will decide to say no. I won't eat this thing. And the Bible says, if you endure temptation, 
you will be given what? A crown of life. A day ye kawa. May you not miss your crown of life. Please sit down. He said, when you endure temptation, you'll be, you'll be given the, a crown of life, which means there's reward for everyone that decides to endure temptation. There's reward. You won't lose out. That you, end, you won't lose out. It's not, it's, it has not been easy. I got born again in 1991. And to the glory of God, I am still in faith till today. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen so many people, you know, in sin, telling me, Pastor, you are just struggling, you are just suffering yourself. I've seen so many people of other religions telling me, Pastor, if you can just come and be, join us to, to do Islam, you will see that so so and so thing will be given. I've seen so many things, but I decide to endure because I love God. And he said to me, he said, if you endure it according to what we have read, there's a crown of life for you. Will you wait to take that crown of life? There's reward. Every single time we refuse to fall into temptation, there is a crown for us. Now, that crown is in two faces. We have the crown of life that we wear up there in heaven. Now, we also have a crown of life that signifies the blessing and the glory of God that we are going to wear here on earth. Please don't fall. Now, let me show you three examples of people. They too were faced by serious temptation to commit sin, but they made up their minds. Now, you know why I want to show you these three people? I want to show you because I want you to know that you can conquer temptation. Say, I can conquer it. The first one is in Genesis 39, verse 9. The man's name is Joseph. Genesis 39, from verse 9. The Bible says, and he said, No one here has more authority than I, than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you. Madam, because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It will be a great sin against God. Can you see why Joseph conquered temptation? He said to himself, because Madame came to meet Joseph and said, Man, Joseph, I love you. Joseph, come and have sex with me. Joseph, I've been watching you in this compound. Joseph, I just love you. Come and have sex with me. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. And Joseph said, Madame, I can't do it. You are a gas wife. He calls it a wicked thing. And if I do this thing, I will sin against God. Can you see that Joseph overcame temptation because he loved God? He didn't want to sin against God. It is not the people who are strong that conquer temptation. It is those who love God that conquer it. I want to like that. I call man bully. No. I want to need for your Neil. Yes. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the love of God. That's why I love God. If you love him, it will be easy for you to conquer. The woman grabbed the trouser, the towel. Joseph was putting on towel. Grabbed the towel, towel of Joseph. Joseph fled. Excuse me. Look up. You understand the power of madame in the house. If you are not married, you may not understand. And if you are married, if you have worked, if you have worked under somebody before, you understand the power of madame in the house. You know that it is madame that determine what happens in the house. And if madame loves you, you know that your, your eating pattern will be different. Hello. If Madame loves you, your eating pattern will be different. If they give everybody one meat, they will give you two. If, that is if it's not even three. If everybody is drinking Gary, those watching me abroad don't know what Gary is. I don't know how to explain Gary to you. But cassava, whatsoever. <laughs> we grind our cassava. When we grind it, we squeeze it, we sieve it for the water to come, we fry it. That's Gary for you. Now, some people, that's what they do. But if madame is in love with you, madame will be asking, what do you want? Look at all the things that madame must have been telling Joseph. We will kill a guy. Don't worry. She is my husband. I will arrange. We will kill him. Or don't worry. I know his savings account. I know his PIN number. I know his AT. I know everything. Joseph, I know you are a stranger. I can even run with you to your father's village. I will free you. For... The woman must have promised him several things. But Joseph kept thinking of one thing. If I do this thing, I will sin against the greatest one that I love. That's why the love of God must be the greatest love in your heart. Not the love of any other person. So Joseph conquered. And when he conquered, he decided not to fall into temptation. Beloved, they lie against him. They sent him to prison. 
But look at the crown of life that came. It was from prison that he was promoted and he became a prime minister. Look up. If there was radio that those days or television those days, you know if a president wants to appoint or create a new office, they will announce it. Now, if there was radio in their days or television in their days and madame is either before the radio or before the TV and she, they are listening and all of a sudden, they just say, if it is Nigeria, you will hear our, our anthem. That our president wants to speak. Then everybody say, our president wants to speak. Let's, let's be calm. Let's be calm. Even madame will listen. Because as at that time, listen, the, the, the husband of madame, Potiphar, was in charge of the house of Pharaoh. He was a prominent man in that government. Then Pharaoh came up and said, I have an announcement. We are creating a new office in Egypt. It's going to be the office of a prime minister. I am king. I'm president. Only by position will I be above that man. That man will determine who eats, who doesn't eat, what we sell, where we sell, and when to sell. That man is going to be in charge of all our foreign and national reserves. His name is Joseph Jacob. Ah, what do you think Madame will say? Madame will say, wait, is it the same Joseph Jacob? Now, and Pharaoh will keep saying, the man that I talked about is a foreigner. He has worked to show us proof that he can manage our economy. He worked under my chief of staff, Potiphar. Then was sent to prison, and he labored in prison for some years. And it was from prison that my cop bearer recommended him. He interpreted my dreams, and now he has been made prime minister. What do you think will happen to Madame that day? That's why before you fall into temptation, think of the future. That place you want to fall, what if you meet that person again? You want to lie to collect money. You want to dupe to collect money. You want to steal to collect. You don't know where you will meet that person again. Some people don't think of those things. In my tribe, we used to say rain can make you to come into somebody's house more than once. What if rain, because of rain, you ran for shelter into somebody's house for the first time and you messed the place up and another rain decided to come? Just like a brother in our church. I've told you this story before. He came, he drives a, 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 uh, he, has a, a he runs a transport company. He came and told me, met me in the office. Pastor, please, I don't know. If you can borrow me money. I said, what do you need money for? He said, sir, my car. This is my source of livelihood. We need so so and so amount to buy this particular thing. He wanted to buy a carburetor. He needed 12,000 naira to buy a carburetor to fix his car. I said, well, I don't have the money with me, but there's this project money of the church that is in my care. Can I give you, when we do refund it, he said, Pastor, ah, ah. if I go and buy it now, they'll fix it. By next week, I will refund it. I said, please refund. It doesn't belong to me. He said, no problem. No problem, sir. So he collected the money. He went called me and told me he has bought the, the, the thing and he has fixed it that his car is working very well. But when he got to Monday that he promised, he didn't show up and he didn't call. Some of you are so bad with such, such things. You are owing the person, you know that you will not meet up. If you will not meet up, you promise Monday, you should not call on Monday, you will have been calling from Friday. That with what I've been saying, you know, what I'm seeing, I am I'm suspecting that my Monday may not be, am I communicating? This brother didn't call, he didn't show up. On Monday, I, did, I didn't call him. The following week, he now came. Ah, he said, my pastor, pastor, pastor. I said, how are you? He said, fine. He said, that money, and he's here, but there's something important I want to use it for to do. He even brought out the money and showed me. He said, I want to use it for something very important, so my own is not important again. My integrity that I put online to give, borrow you church money is not important. I didn't say anything. He said, so I will go and use it. Don't worry. In, by next week, Monday, I will see you. The other Monday, he didn't come back again. Two weeks after, I didn't come back. Then you keep telling me, Pastor, I didn't forget you. Anything I come to church, Pastor, I didn't forget you. Anything I come to church. So one day he said, Pastor, I didn't forget I said, forget it. Don't worry. I sow it to your work. And I used my money to go and pay the church money. And I said, I, don't worry. I use it to support your business. He said, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. I was waiting for another time. Then another time came. This time, his tire got, you know, uh, destroyed on the way. He needed, there was no way I could move the car without that. He ran to my office again. Pastor, please help me. Pastor, please help me. I only need common 6,000. He said, common 6,000 is what I need now. As if he put money in my hands. Common 6,000 is what I need now. My tire just got busted on the way. What do I do? Pastor, I had the money with me. I said, ah, yeah. And I don't have the one to borrow you. 
I don't have the one to borrow. The same way he told me that he had my money, but he didn't have the one to give me. Do you know that his car sat with the mechanic because of that for almost one year? Why? He closed the door by himself. Every single time you fall before temptation, hear me, you are closing doors. I told you last week, the presence of God will depart, but you can conquer. Joseph conquered, you can conquer temptation. Well, how do you conquer temptation? Like I told you, you conquer temptation by your what? By your remembrance of the love you have for God. Say, I love God. I didn't hear you clearly. Look at another person that conquered temptation. We are going very far today. Number two, another person that conquered temptation that we should learn from is Peter. Peter. In Acts of Apostles chapter 5, 28 and 29. He had there were people threatened him. Stop preaching about Jesus. If you preach about Jesus, we will kill you. Show us the scripture. Acts of Apostles chapter 5. 28 and 29. Because some of you, you betray God. You betray Jesus. I should, my handkerchief is sweet already. I used to clean my mouth. Maybe it has touched this sugar. <laughs> Saying, now where am I? 28. Did we not strictly command you not to teach in, the name, in this name? And he looked. You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And intend to bring this man's blood on us. Now look at Peter's response. Look at what Peter now said. We have told you not to preach about Jesus. We have told you not to preach about Jesus. We will kill you. We will do this. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to do what? To be God rather than man. Can you see that Peter was able to pass that temptation because he loved God? If you are allowing yourself to fall into sin, you can't tell me that you love God. If you love God, God will be your number one consideration, point of reasoning, whenever things want to happen. But because people don't love God, they don't care. They put God behind. Whenever anything is happening. <laughs> well, I, I was talking to a couple like that. I was asking the woman, why do you want to leave your husband? We tried to say to them, she kept insisting, I'm going, I'm going. Why do you want to leave your husband? Does it beat you? She said, no. Is he not responsible at home? He said, he's responsible. Is he, we asked her the question. We asked, okay, tell us one reason why you want to leave him. He said, I'm just tired. But you are a born again Christian. Are you not born again? He said, I'm born again. If you are a child of God, your consciousness should always be to please God. And if your God is saying, I hate divorce. And it's not, that, it's not a marriage where the man is beating you. There is no violence in this marriage. What is going on? Is he not responsible? He said, no, I'm just tired. I just feel like trying somebody new. We allowed her to go and try somebody new. She has gone to exile now. Because that somebody new put her into trouble of almost two million naira. She collected money from her clients. The man said, don't worry, let me go and keep it for you. The man absconded with the money. And funny enough, one of the clients that she collected money from is a, soldier, is a military man, a soldier. So she had to run out of Ibadan. She went somewhere to go and hide. They are looking for her till now. Peter said, I rather obey God than men. For you to overcome temptation, it is the love of God that can help you to do it. Let's look at the third example. Number three. This third one is the three Hebrew brothers. Daniel chapter 3, 17 and 18. Look at what they said. Daniel chapter 3, 17 and You know what I'm telling you all these things? Because it will, it will get to a point when you are faced by temptation. Some of your family members will even tell you, are you Mumu? Ah, are you Mumu? The man says you should come and sleep in the hotel and take this, this, your application and take this new job. My friend, go and sleep. Is it not only one night? And collect the application and let's come out of poverty. Ah, if you love God, you won't do it. Or they are telling you, don't worry, don't, don't worry. Just go and plant this thing, this, uh, this uh, juju. Plant it at the entrance of your shop. Customers will be coming. Then you'll be pleading the blood of Jesus. You'll be pleading the blood. You know, like one shop I went to like that to pray. The woman put our calendar in front. If you now move the calendar, there is juju at the, at the back. She used Jesus' calendar to cover her juju. Where is it? Daniel chapter 3, 17 and 18. Listen, if that is the case... This brother said, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. 
O king. That instead of us to bow to your image, we are ready to go, your God, our God will deliver us. He now said again, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor we worship the God, the gold image which you have set up. Can you see? Even if God doesn't deliver us from your fire, look at their level of love for God. Some of you cannot go to symbol hunger. And you say you love God. Some of you, it is your, it is your manhood that is, ah, I love this sister. I don't know. The thing is doing, and it's not, you are not yet married. Ah, can you share? She may be in the king. If you love God, we are sacro and leni. Sacro, my sister, and what? What will me love? But some of you say, ah, 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 you can't cheat nature. You can't cheat nature. You can't cheat nature. Why not be sleeping and be driving and be saying you can't cheat nature and go and have accident? You refuse nature when you want to sleep and you are driving. You are saying, no, 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 no. If I'm going to go, I'm But why is it that I'm going to go and let's not cheat nature? Oh, I'm going to go. Look at them. They say, we'd rather go through your fire. How much do they want to give you that will make you to deny your God? How much? If you love God, you prove that you love him. Loving God is like marriage. We that are married, 21 years, do you want to tell me that it's 21 years of sweetness? There are days in our marriages that we go through fire. But no, we love ourselves. We must prove that we love ourselves. And we love ourselves, we must cope with the areas of our lives that we are not perfect. And if you love God, you must prove it. These three brothers said, if you like, put us in the fire. Because Three things to do to conquer. Com- uh, sorry, not three things. I wrote here, what are the virtues needed to conquer temptation? What are the virtues needed to conquer temptation. What are the virtues needed? Because there are certain virtues that you must develop in yourself in order to conquer temptation. There are three I will talk about in this service and I'll close. We have just 15 minutes more. Three. Number one, how do you conquer? What do you need to develop to conquer temptation? The knowledge of his will and the decision to live by it. The first one is the knowledge of his will. O ye. O tito. Ati fe o loro. That's the foundation. Do you know that? One of the things that helps us to conquer temptation. Is the knowledge of the truth. You know the truth now. Hello. Like me now. If I'm driving. Why do I need to pay that much? I had to pay. I paid about, uh, how much did I pay? I paid about, uh, was it 28,000 naira or 30,000 to get a driver's license. I've been driving several years. But anytime I see low safety officers, I will dodge. There was this particular day I was going very far. I needed to meet up to an appointment. I left a job. I was to get to uh, uh, um, challenge. For very important meeting, I got to the Rovans Road. I saw road safety in front. And I didn't have driver's license. I had to park. I was waiting for them to go. They didn't go. Why did I park? Because I know that if they should catch me without a driver's license, I'll be penalized. Hello? The knowledge of the truth. I know the truth. A lot of children of God their conscience today is not strong because they don't know the truth of the word of God. You know that the, the, the level of truth you know is what determines how strong your conscience is. Hello, am I communicating? Ah. You, don't you know that some people are doing the wrong thing and their conscience is not pricking them? Because they don't know that what they are doing is wrong. They were kneeling Jesus on the cross and Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Their conscience did not tell them that what they are doing is wrong. Because they didn't know the truth. So my conscience was beating me. I had to wait. 
So when I waited and waited for like 30 minutes, these people didn't go. I now get set it. I now get set it. I saw that a vehicle was going. As they passed the vehicle, I just started my own. I, I got on fast lane. Before they could turn, I've gone. And I said to myself, I need to go and get a driver's license. I can't continue to live my life like this. I can't continue to live my life like this. So I went for a driver's license. When I got my driver's license, the temp I have the temporary one now. When I got it, anytime I'm going on Lagos Road, I'm even looking for them. Because my seatbelt is on. The next thing they will ask for is driver's license. My vehicle particular is complete. Why? I know the truth. But do you know that some people don't know? For you to conquer temptation, you have to equip your mind with the knowledge of the truth of God's word. That's why I study the Bible. The more of the truth of God's word you know, the more your conscience will be strong. When you want to do certain things, your conscience will be the one beating you. You could have shame or doubt. Or to first on your doubt. Or to first on your doubt. Push it away or doubt. The pastor is not there to preach to you, but your conscience is preaching. Because you are the one that will use the knowledge of the truth to empower your conscience. Am I communicating? So to conquer temptation, study more of God's truth. Study more of God's word. So that your conscience will have enough uh, 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 truth, materials, to energize your heart. Number two. Oh, okay. Let's take a scripture to it. Let's take a scripture to it. Number, still on number one. Take a scripture to it. What's the scripture? John chapter 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. Put it on screen. Let them see. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Not set. Make you free. So the more of the truth you know, the more your conscience is strong. The more of your conscience is strong. The more of your conscience is strong. The more your conscience becomes strong. And your conscience is part of the tools that will help you to conquer temptation. So number two this morning. Number two, a few minutes more, close. The second virtue needed in order to conquer temptation is contentment. What's number two? Contentment. In Yoruba, we call it itelorunu. Is Mr. Ojo here? Itelorunu. Can you move So open your eyes. <laughs> Look at the dictionary meaning of contentment. It is where, sorry, it is to understand and appreciate your size, level, part time. Now, not only to understand, it is to understand and appreciate your level and size part time. Cherry, I did tell you, you know, to get your color for Shubu, you know, you know, you can't tell me, you know, 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 you Constitution, cash shape, then you can come out 12 years, cut the machine memo. That's the problem of man, human being. But you can conquer it. You see somebody that is well dressed will be looking at somebody that is not well dressed and be envying a part of that person's life. I wish I have a kind of hair. Not a kind of, I, my nose is perfect, but I wish I have a, a kind of hair. And the Bible says he maketh everything beautiful in his time. Everyone is beautiful on his own. Tell yourself, I love my life. You are not saying it like you understand it. I want you to get to that point of contentment. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my children. I thank God for the members that I pastor. I th thank God for winners, all these big, big churches. But I thank, see, Pastor Prince will really be satisfied with where I am. Because I know that in God's uh, arrangement, this is where I'm supposed to be. I will teach you how to gain contentment. It's a virtue you must develop. 
Or else, see, you may be eating chicken and still you'll not be contented. I know of people like that. I'm telling you. A, a great footballer, I don't want to mention his name. Great footballer. Place in England. Went to the supermarket and stole a spoon. He stole spoon. Could he afford the spoon? Yes, now. But he just saw that spoon, I love it. Instead of him to go and pay, he stole it. As he was going out, they caught him. If there is any virtue that I think that you should develop more in this life, it is a virtue called contentment. A state in your life where you are satisfied with your life and your level per time. And do you know that you cannot be satisfied with your level until you understand that this is where you are supposed to be per time? We are going somewhere. Hmm. I'm looking for it. Then, where am I? Okay. It is to understand and appreciate your size and level per time. Listen, except we want to deceive ourselves, we all know our level, we all know what our level can attract. It means that you understand what you can afford without having to put God out of your life. Contentment is knowing what you can afford without having to sin, without having to steal or to do anything contrary. That's what contentment is. I know what I, I, I can afford. If what I can afford to eat now without stealing, without doing anything contrary is to drink gari and put small sugar to it. I know that this is what I can afford. That's what contentment is. Why is it that people go into Yahoo Yahoo? It's lack of contentment. Why do they go into stealing? Lack of contentment. Why do women still want to keep extramarital affairs? They say, oh, I won't have one sugar that will take care of me. It's lack of contentment. If you know your size part time, you will live your life and enjoy it. That's why when I go to stores, I know what I can afford. I don't go to a shop where I will be tempted. That's me. If you say, go out, Pastor, go and buy a car. I don't buy a car. Just my, my own understanding of faith is what God can give me. Part time. Can God give me Omar Jeep now? No. You know why he will not give me Omar Jeep now? If he give me Omar Jeep now, all your offering cannot fuel it. Cannot maintain it. So that Omar Jeep will kill me. My mentor uses Omar Jeep. He said when they, they change the oil every three, 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 uh, uh, every three months, that one of the oil is at 6,000. It uses three. One oil is at six. It uses three. And they'll change it every three months. That's four times in a year. Calculate it for me. I visited him. He was selling me his car. When they enter gallop, the thing doesn't stay. That they said the balloon in the gallop has spoiled. It's a balloon. He said they don't use shock absorber. They use balloon. The balloon is 700,000 naira. Power one. Balloon. So it would be wrong of me to envy him. Am I communicating? It would be stupid of me. It is because we don't, we don't want to be contented. That's why we are running the race that we are not supposed to run. There is a time in your life that what you can afford is Tokumbo TV. Enjoy it. There is a time in your life you can enjoy new. Enjoy it. There is a time in your life you can... You know, I was passing through a shop last... Uh, was it yesterday? They just opened that shop. I saw this big screen TV. Very big like a cinema hall. I, I never reached there. Contentment is knowing your level per time. You know that what you can afford is to drink gari and dry fish. You are now eating it and you are crying. Ah, this life, this life, you know, you, you know balance, you know balance. Ah, they eat gari. ah, that's what you can afford, my friend, without stealing. Your level is anything you can afford without having to sin, without having to cheat or lie. If you are in that level, thank God for it, if you know that level. But like I always tell you, any level you are in that you need to borrow to maintain is not your level. Come down. Are you hearing me? In annoying him, Neku. Any level you are in that you need to be borrowing to maintain, 
Come down. If it's a car you need to be borrowing to maintain, you better go and sell it. It's true. And buy the one that you can, you can. You know, there are some cars that if you buy fuel of 3,000, one week you are still using it. Huh? Africa. She will want to connor it. Buy a metal loan. Have you put a woman? Kimetan. I'm Africa. Four tiny. The body put 3,000. And then, but that is, that is your level. Level T. Louis. Don't deceive yourself. I want more. Shelly. Ah, oh God. To the cafe man far away, the Lumician won't continue to go. I gave me Luma, a minor fellow. Oh, not here. Woman, a tear. You won't even my hair, tear. Oh, not here, tear any. She go go to my she sits here, no. Enjoy your level part time. Are you getting what I'm saying? Lack of contentment is the reason why people fall. You have a beautiful wife beside you. You are now saying she's not tall. Were you blind when you were looking for a wife? <laughs> no, be sincere. Were you blind? You say she, her bum bum is not big. Were you blind when you were looking for her? These are little, little things that you say, ah, Papa, I don't know. I was just looking at, I was just looking, I didn't know how I fell. It's a lie. You knew how you fell. It's because you are not contented. How do you develop contentment? Let me rush it within the limited time we have. I have it in A, B, and C. How do you develop? Or let's confirm more in scriptures before we take how. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. First Timothy 6, 6. Look at this. Let's read together. One, two, and let's go. Now, godliness with contentment is what? It's great gain. Great gain. Great gain. Now, can I also tell you that contentment is not a gift. It's a character you develop. It's not something you pray to have. Father, give me contentment. Father, mm -mm, it's not a gift. It's something you must develop. Now, before you become born again, look up. Your parents are supposed to help you to build contentment to a level. Before you became born again. In building contentment, I've started telling you, your parents should be number first role to help you. Now, that's why, when parents are here, when you notice children, you will cook rice at home. They will not eat, but they will go to the next door. Your neighbor's house. Your neighbor will cook the same rice. They will eat and lick plate. When they come home, what should you do? Don't rub his head and say, ah, that's one thing we make. Cooking like Unjeta Vasele. Chibolunja Unja Luma like Mike Lisha. Omotu Yeko Mu. Bibeli ni aya. Omode ni we ready see. Egba passion. Laughing leja de. Ah. Coco fibre. Now, a child that you buy cloth for at all, he won't wear it. He's now saying, We are going for our school uh, in Tao Sports. He now go, Muloya, canvas, Nile, and one Lake. You won't want to have a seat if it's here. Two TT, ya gone, we are put your back. Timon meter by canvas in the con. You look canvas like ah. You start planting it from their teenage, from when they are babies. Am I communicating? Because today's parents say, eh, I don't know the kind of life they are living. Today's parents are turning their children to be friends at the early stage. Your children are not supposed to be friends until when they get to a certain age. At the beginning, they should be, they should be your kotoji. I want to train. Then when they get to an age, they become your friends. Now, and when you become born again, that's why 
what we taught you in the first service. You must have mentors, spiritual parents, people that can call you to order and say, ah, ah, mommy, George, I want to see you. People that will call you after service, that will tell you what they notice, that will tell you what to correct. But today, we want to live an, an independent life. After service, I'll just carry my Bible and be great. I don't want to have any relationship with any fucking pastor. You won't grow in contentment. People that will tell you that, no, madam, you don't need what this thing that you want to do now. Oh, need there. Sir, you know, you're just discussing, sir, we want to move out of our house. Like, you know, we want to move out of our house. You are renting a house. We want to move to a more, another rented house. Why? You say because it's more comfortable. It's not your own. A true father will tell you, you don't need to move to another rented. It's not your own. They will still drive you, but they will increase rent. They will begin to teach you how to have your own. So, number one way to build uh, 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 contentment is what? You need parental assistance. Write it down. You need to submit yourself for parental assistance. Let my friend buy one million house. If I'm not ready to buy a house, I'm not ready. I will not be buying a house because my friend has bought one. Second way to build contentment, what's number two? Study the word. Submit yourself to the word of God. Let the word of God show you who you are. It is in the word of God you discover that you are not Thai. If your name is Kenny, you are Kenny. You are different from Thai. Your destiny is not another man's destiny. You don't have the same track. Submit under the word. It is in the word of God I discovered who I am. And I discovered that God has a unique plan for me. That's why when I sing that song that Sinat sang, sang, I used to sing it with confidence. I am a chosen generation called for to show his excellence. All I require for life God has given me. I know who I Some people don't know who they are. That's why they want to live everybody's life. He has bought a car, I'm going to buy. He has bought a jeep, I'm going to buy. He has traveled abroad, me too, I want to travel. He is going to his house, me too, I want to go to my house. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. I know. Do you know who you are? It is the word of God that will show you who you are. So even let every sister in the church get married. And you are still single. You know that they can't marry your own husband. See I hear. So what's the second way? To develop contentment, submit yourself, what? To the study of the word. Read the Bible until you discover who you are. What's the next one? Surround yourself with true believers. Not friends that will show you pictures that will corrupt, corrupt you. If you are going to develop co co contentment, surround yourself with true believers. There are some friends, if you, get, if you allow them to get closer to you, they will corrupt your mind. They will corrupt your mind. That's why I thank God for my life. Do you know there are some friends I have, they will come to where I'm living and say, Pastor Prince, you've been doing the work of the ministry for 20 something years. Is this where you are living? Me, I don't send anybody. This is what God gave me. A pastor I watched on Facebook was celebrating, I don't know how many years in ministry. His members came one day on the day of celebration and gave him the key of his house, of the house. And we get there one day. Do you understand? Surround yourself with the right people. Be careful of friends that want to move you towards wrong direction. To begin to desire what is not. Last one. Last virtue needed. I told you three virtues needed to conquer temptation. Prayerfulness. Prayerfulness. It is in the place of prayer that we develop spiritual strength. 
to go through temptation. You know what you draw in the prayer place? You draw strength. So if you don't know that when you are praying, you are drawing strength. That's why Jesus, our Lord, said to Peter, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. Watch and pray. If you are not praying, you can't generate strength. You know, there are some things you will go through. By the time you come out, you will look back and you ask yourself, am I the one that went through these things? Hey, thank God, do. Thank God I didn't follow. Hey, is God that helped me, oh. You generate such strength in the place of prayer. So when you are praying, you are generating, you are charging to conquer temptation. So let me ask you again, will you conquer temptation? Will you fall? I didn't hear you. Sister Messi, will you fall? Make up your mind. You know, people like them, all these young girls of now, these are the stage of your life. You, you, you are using you as an example to other girls when boys will be coming around you. They'll be packing videos cars. You think they will be packing like that for life? They are after something. For you face where you are going. I always tell my daughters at home. I'm giving you, by the grace of God, quality education. So that one, you will not become a liability to me and my wife. That when we release you, me and my wife want to enjoy our night life. When they say, ah, where is it? Ah, in your life is in Canada doing exploits. Hey, shall for me? Okay, like him. Oh, in Korea, she's the chief justice of our nation. <laughs> and what about Oila? He's the CMD of uh, loot now. So that when you are in my life, my wife can, and I always tell them, when it is time for you to choose a partner, that see, whoever you bring to me, I will take them to my mentor first. Because when it is time for you to Yes. If they say no, I have told them now. Before I, do, I used to tell them, if my father says they don't say no way, see, no way. You are laughing. Is the truth? May you not fall. Every plan of the devil, in form of trap, you escape. Like Joseph, you escape. Like Peter, you overcome. Like the three Hebrew brothers, the Lord will defend you. You will not fall to temptation. I say you will not fall to temptation in the name of Jesus. Before we pray, next week, we'll be looking at how to conquer the temptation of sexual sin. Now, I told you that we're going to end it by May. The upper week, Family Sunday, but in, in, in May, we'll be looking at how to conquer the temptation of love of money. The following one will be looking at how to conquer the temptation of, be of becoming proud. We'll be looking at all these things. Then by May, that May end, we are going to finish everything. But see, equip your mind with enough truth that will energize your conscience. Bow down your heads and begin to pray. Father, uphold me that what I've had today will not stand against me on the last day of judgment, but will build me up. Help me that I will not just be a hearer, but a doer of this word. Make me a doer. Make me, make me a doer, O oh God. That I will not just be a hearer. Give me grace to build contentment. Are you praying? Give me grace, O oh God. To build contentment. Contentment. In the name of Jesus. Grace for contentment. In the name of Jesus. Every wrong person around my life. Father, separate them from me by fire. Begin to pray. You can tell those are the children church to begin to come in. Begin to pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God, your word that we have heard today. We pray that you will help us. Lord, to build contentment in the name of Jesus. Everyone whose prayer life has gone dry, Father, let there be fresh fire. 
upon our prayer life, that our prayer altar will be burning again. We also pray that you equip us with the knowledge of your word. We shall know your word. As we read, may we understand. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Do we have any